Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. Today, we're discussing the Bremont DH-88, a tribute to the de Havilland 88 that once set an unfathomably quick 7-plus day transit from England to Australia. You can see, and you can own, this 2016 limited edition of 282 pieces in steel on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos, and please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full sales listing for this watch with additional accessories included in the sale, high resolution images for your desktop, and naturally complete pricing details for this Bremont DH88 limited edition. Now the watch on my wrist is many things. It's a historical tribute, it's a limited edition, it's a dual time, it's a chronograph, and it's a chronometer. All of these things to a high standard in a 43 millimeter stainless steel case. Let's talk about how it fits. Well, the watch is 43 millimeters like most Bremont timepieces, but you'll note that a 43 millimeters round, not including the crowns, and it's got, as you can see, two chronograph pushers and two separate crowns. It doesn't wear quite that large across the wrist as the lug to lug dimension is 50 millimeters even. So because these lugs are generally tapered and I must say that they do rather blend away and melt away at the periphery of the wrist, uh, I would say you could wear this watch on a wrist as small as 14 to 14 and a half centimeters in circumference. The lower end of that scale if your wrist is more oval than round. Now again, I, I talk about how the lugs taper nicely. Bremont is sort of the master of stubby teardrop lugs. The triptic case construction separates the mid case, that is the round canister for dial, crystal, and movement from the form of the lugs. And by decoupling these two physical features, they managed to make a 43 millimeter watch wear like a 40. So good for small wrists like mine. You also note the use of curved spring bars, which nicely trace the arc of the case and allow the strap to be drilled closer to the case without becoming constrained against its side. You can see it has freedom of movement to wrap straight down around the wrist if you are slight of forearm like myself. The calfskin, aviator style, is generously bolstered down the center to give it some body and substance. And there's a monotone stitch with folded edges. On the underside, you can see it's more of a natural coloration, and you can also see that the strap is basically unworn. It features a simple pin buckle, as you can see. Bremont standard issue for easy adjustment on the fly. And this is a watch that is themed for those who love to get it on the fly. The timepiece pays tribute to the 1934 record set by the de Havilland DH-88, of which an example remains flying today, and a piece of which can be seen on the reverse of the case. But back then, England to Australia in less than several weeks was unfathomable. To do it in basically one week was the equivalent of a moonshot in the mid-1930s. So this watch pays tribute both to the surviving DH-88 as well as the feat itself, an important entry in the annals of aviation history as well as British aviation history. The case, again, the triptych construction method preferred by Bre uh, Bremont, different modules for the lugs as well as the case. Also, you can see the DLC finished center case, and what you can't see is the face hardened steel, which achieves over 1,000 Vickers face hardness. Now that doesn't mean that the case straight through is as hard as ceramic. What it does mean, and you can see this is a pre-owned watch, is that short of a blow that would take chunks out of your wrist, it mostly just laughs off scratches and scuffs. In day-to-day -day use, especially if you happen to be an aviator, you're rarely going to encounter any kind of a strike or a blow that's going to put any kind of tangible mark in this case. You'll also note that the watch features a number of additional functions such that this is a full-service sports watch. Do you want an internal rotating bezel? Well, you've got one. As you can see, Somewhat like the Rolex GMT Master, there's a bi-directional rotating bezel. Unlike the Rolex, this one is physically fixed in place unless you turn the crown, so it has more security, and it operates internally. If you set the 24-hour hand to Greenwich Mean Time, Again, like the Rolex, you can use it to temporarily read three time zones by aligning with the 24-hour hand and then offsetting per the local GMT offset for whatever airport you're flying to. Now, if you want to operate the chronograph, well, it's got one of those two. It has a three-register chronograph with seconds, minutes, and hours, and you'll note that the imagery is of vintage instrumentation without being slavish to any particular inspiration. Now, the watch that, in, or I should say the aircraft that inspires the watch, is principally red and white in its coloration. So this timepiece is more of a tribute to an era than anything specific. And 
In that respect, it's an original work of imagination. You can see the propeller inlay of the crown. You can see matching inlay on the crown that operates the internal rotating bezel. Of course, the watch features a second time zone that can be actuated in the fashion that is more familiar to most users as the 24-hour hand can be moved independently of the local time at center. You'll also note that by turning in the opposite direction, you activate the quick set for the date, and by pulling to extremity, you stop the seconds, and now you can synchronize precisely to a known accurate reference time. The watch features a handsome and, one might even say a little bit quirky, heavily knurled diamond form vintage aviators crown on the Bremont case form and that's blended with imagery on the case back that can only be described as a little bit exuberant and buoyant. Of course the aircraft that inspired the watch is mostly red and white and if you had to guess just once you'd probably gauge as much from the coloration of the case back with not blue but red screws and an enormous marquee attached to a piece of wood actually taken from the undercarriage of the sole survivor DH-88, which is actually the record-setting aircraft. So you have a little bit of history, and that's not just a reference to the propeller. The movement itself, a value 7754 in chronometer specification, is a classic of chronograph and chronometer lore. Of course, very accurate when delivered in its highest specification. It is a chronometer, but it's also tank tough. So you get two qualities that are perfectly suitable for aviation as well as horology. It features the hacking seconds, the double quick set, so you can adjust the second time zone and quick set the date. It's protected down to 100 meters thanks to a case that, though aviation themed, nevertheless is suitable for aquatic activities. And of course, because it is a 7750, it'll survive nuclear war. So though this watch is 1930s themed, nevertheless, it is a timepiece for any exigency that may arise in any era. Tank tough, beautifully made, fairly rare with 282 made, highly accurate, original in its form, and one of the few chronometer chronographs that you can say is made in London. This is the Bremont DH-88 Limited Edition.